Okay, I've uh, had a couple of questions recently about certificate-based authentication. So I thought I'd do a quick video run through um, how certificate authentication works with um, Entra ID, but it doesn't matter what the IDP is necessarily, um, to validate uh, client uh, certificates uh, and sign users in transparently with uh, uh, Zscaler Client Connector. And obviously this also applies for uh, smart cards, which are essentially a, a certificate-based authentication mechanism which you can extract from the machine. So um, inside of security in Entra, we've got authentication methods. Um, here we'll see certificate-based authentication. Uh, we'll go ahead and configure it. And I've uploaded my um, issuer certificate. So everything's issued by my uh, Microsoft certificate server on premise. Um, and so it's going to validate um, the client certificates against this um, certificate authority. It'll do um, certificate revocation checks and uh, OCSP. So put those advertised and they're part of the certificate um, uh, attributes. I'll pull all those um, pieces away from there. Um, so certificate-based certificate authentication is configured um, in Entra here. Um, and then um, what I've got is a couple of devices that are managed by um, uh, Intune. Um, this first one, um, SLP, um, is fully hybrid uh, AD joined. Um, so it's uh, compliant. Um, it's uh, part of uh, uh, Entra. Um, so it's fully managed, fully running all of its policy. Whereas... Um, this device, this uh, second device, uh, O41, um, is, a, is a personal device. Um, so the device compliance, um, default compliance policy, but it's not part of, uh, it's not part of Entra. I'll show you um, how that looks. The reason why I'm showing you this is because there are a couple of things we want to, to be aware of when um, using certificate-based authentication. Um, I'll jump into this uh, policy uh, object that uh, we've got configured here. Um, there's a couple of settings. Uh, automatically, uh, in fact, let's jump into these because there's a couple I probably should delete. Um, those two are disabled. Um, automatically select client certificates. So what we have here is um, two settings. One that says anything that's um, internal uh, in my internal domain. Um, select the certificates that are issued by my certificate authority um, but also these these two here um, star.certauth.login.microsoft.online.com um, select certificate and um, certauth.login.microsoft.online.com um, the reason you have the two uh, we will be redirected by Microsoft for, for certificate based authentication to certauth.login.microsoft.online.com but it'll also uh, redirect you to uh, a URL which is T um, and then your tenant ID so um, we come back over here um, and look at my enter ID tenant I got my tenant ID so it creates something that says T F E blah blah blah, blah and uh, 854 dot uh, dot login dot Microsoft online dot com so you need to um, have that configuration uh, available there um, so this is saying to Edge, uh, which is going to be the embedded browser that we're going to use, um, automatically select the certificate. Um, uh, and then um, we say, okay, should uh, Edge um, prompt me if there is uh, more than one certificate? Well, we don't, we don't want to do that. Um, and then I've also got a setting here um, for browser-based, if we were to use browser-based authentication. So instead of the authentication happening within Client Connector, um, actually launching um, the browser, doing the authentication within the browser. So you might need to do that if, for example, you need to use uh, a YubiKey uh, as a second factor to unlock your smart card, for example, and, and, and you need to interact with it. Um, so you'd use the external browser. Uh, and so what we've got configured here is we say, okay, um, these these endpoints, SAML SP, which is the um, ZPA endpoint, and mobile.zscaler2, which is the mobile endpoint, um, when it tries to launch something with the protocol ZSA, automatically launch them. So you, you're instruct, excuse me, instructing Entra 
uh, sorry, you're instructing the Edge browser that the result of authentication um, should then trigger the application to launch um, Zscaler Client Connector or send that data across the Client Connector. Okay, so um, what we'll do, hmm, something interesting going on with uh, Enter at the moment. What we'll do, um, uh, I'll then come in and I'll show you the IDP configuration in um, ZPA. Um, I've got my Azure configuration here. Um, and it's, uh, it's all very simple. We have uh, uh, login at microsoftonline.com, SAML2, uh, and we add the query string, uh, WHR, uh, Windows Home Realm, as well as geek.net. So it knows it's automatically going to sign me into um, that domain. Uh, and we have the same thing uh, over here on, uh, on Zscaler Internet Access, login at microsoftonline.com, my tenant ID. Um, again, we say Windows Home Realm. Uh, welshgeek.net so it's automatically going to attempt to sign me in okay so those are my configurations i've got enter configured for certificates i've got my um, uh, intune policy that pushes down those configuration options to my uh, machines um, and then i've got uh, zia and zpa configured um, to do the um, saml authentication so if we come across here this is my uh, unmanaged device and we know it's unmanaged if we come into uh, sorry, not unmanaged. It is managed, but it's not um, uh, joined to enter uh, ID or it's not uh, part of my um, domain. We can see it's managed by the MDM, but it's not managed by, uh, it's not connected to Azure AD. Whereas this one, which is hybrid AD joined, we come into account settings. Uh, here we can see that uh, this one is joined to the domain and it's joined um, to enter as well and we can see a bit more of this if we um, come to uh, ds reg uh, status or so azure ad joined domain joined um, and uh, we've got all of the uh, the tokens tenant details um, and we've got the azure ad primary refresh token um, Whereas uh, this device over here, it's not it's not joined to anything, uh, so therefore we don't have a primary refresh token. Um, it's pretty uh, pretty basic. Um, but if we launch uh, Edge here, and we go to uh, let's go to myapps.microsoft.com. It's going to try and log me in and go to mryan at wellsgeek.net and it'll do this uh, prompt me here and I'll say okay well I want to sign in with a certificate um, and I'm signed in so I know that uh, certificate authentication there is configured and working let's uh, go ahead and sign out there not interested in that anymore uh, that'll ask me to close everything out and if I come across to my managed device here and I go to Edge. Well, I should be signed in. Yeah, I'm already signed in um, because it's a managed account. Um, and uh, if I go to uh, myapps.microsoft.com, um, I don't even get prompted. I'm automatically signed in. I didn't even get prompted for, for authentication um, because uh, I've got the primary refresh token. Um, but if I wanted to um, go ahead here and uh, sign out and then go to, uh, let's close the browser down, let's reopen it, and go to my apps, it should have signed me out. We'll get the same uh, thing. It'll ask me for the credentials. I use the smart card and I'm signed in um, there. So I, I know certificate authentication is working. I sign in there and it's all good. Um, the other thing to uh, look at is Edge uh, policy. And we can see that um, we've got the uh, configuration here. Um, and we've got um, that says um, Zscaler can be launched 
and we've got those um, patterns for auto select certificate for URLs. Uh, if we come across to uh, Edge on this one, we see we've got the same the same setting there. Um, and the other um, the other thing to see uh, is the application links. And it says, OK, automatically open those links. And we can see that this is part of that managed uh, profile that comes down from, uh, from this bit of the policy. OK, so we know that the, the clients are configured um, correctly. We know we've got, um, i just just show you the client certificate that's on the device. Uh, it's issued by um, my machine, uh, my uh, certificate server. Uh, and we have uh, a similar certificate on this device. Obviously, this is Entra joined as well, so I've got um, Microsoft MDM, CAs, and everything else in there. Okay, so what we've done also is I've installed um, Zscaler Client Connector on these machines using um, the installer option user domain equals welshgeek.net and uh, cloud name is Zscaler2. So if I go ahead and I launch um, Zscaler uh, Client Connector on this machine, um, it's automatically signing me in. Um, in this machine, it's partly because it's using the primary refresh token, but that primary re refresh token is uh, predicated on the certificate-based uh, authentication that happened when, when I signed in. Um, so that's going to go off and connect. If I do the same on, on this machine, uh, let's go ahead and launch Zscaler. Kind of a slightly different experience on this machine because Entra needs to know a little bit more um, to be able to sign me in. I don't have that uh, primary refresh token. So I need to enter my, um, my credentials here. Um, and then I say use the smart card. And at that point, it triggers the whole process. It's going to use the embedded WebView 2 uh, Edge browser um, to, to, to actually facilitate that uh, exchange of certificate information uh, and uh, and away we go. Now, um, it's probably also worth noting, uh, let's come across here and let's go into the Client Connector portal. that I have uh, under here, platform settings. I'm using WebView 2 because WebView 2 basically says use the, use the essentially the WebView 2, the Edge browser to do the authentication or manage all of that configuration. Um, if I didn't have that enabled, it wouldn't uh, be able to access the certificates um, or exchange the certificates appropriately. Um, or it would try and use the uh, WinINet DLL, the, the essentially the, uh, um, the embedded IE browser. Uh, we can also enable browser-based authentication. We click Save on that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just briefly log out here um, and show you how it looks with uh, browser-based authentication. Um, like I said, you, you might use browser-based authentication um, if there was something that the, the user needed to interact to be able to do something. Maybe it's a PIN code potentially, or, or they need the YubiKey to unlock their smart card. So at this point, huh? That should come down as part of the policy, but let's say use Edge. Uh, again, I get that same M Ryan uh, prompt to enter my credentials. I'm now going to click the smart card, do the certificate based authentication. And because of those uh, options, it's automatically launched um, a client connector. Uh, and those, those other things around launching ZSA um, means that uh, it's going to do the certificate based authentication there and launch uh, client connector. So we'll go ahead and launch Client Connector and we'll just show that it's uh, properly uh, logging the user in. Okay, so two different two different ways to do the authentication inside a Client Connector, outside a Client Connector using the browser-based uh, authentication mechanism, and that then uh, returns you back to Client Connector once you've authenticated. Um, and then um, what might be interesting is if we just look at the sign-in logs. They are um, delayed with Azure by sometimes as much as 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, 10, 12 with 10, 30. So we're about 20 minutes delayed on the Azure um, authentication. 
but um, if we look back at some of my uh, older logs uh, here uh, we can see uh, the authentication details that I did uh, it says previously satisfied for ZPA if we do ZIA here uh, I did X509 certificate authentication and MFA was treated because of the X509 certificate um, and uh, the same is true on this one uh, which would be if we look at the device information this was edge um, and see if we got any other information in here yeah that was the browser based authentication yeah so your portal does seem to be having some problems today um, and so um, so we've got all of that um, so let's um, let's take a look at some policy things so if I on the unmanaged device I try to access my Apache uh, Apache .net. expect to get a denied warning it says denied policy blocked um, but I can access um, my uh, CentOS server here yeah, Welsh net intranet um, and if we come into uh, private access and we look at the um, the diagnostics logs for that um, in fact let's just do live logs and we'll, we'll refresh that so refresh for CentOS we can see that the user was uh, allowed access um, whereas if we go to uh, Apache I get denied and the reason it's denied is because I'm saying okay we're gonna we're gonna deny everybody explicitly access to the Apache server because of um, the policy whereas if I come into um, my managed device here I could click the link I can access the application and the reason I can access the application on that one is because I've got a, a policy that says allow from managed devices and that allow from managed devices says okay I've got a SAML attribute that says is managed equals true and the distinction between these two different uh, things are hey they both did certificate based authentication but my managed device the result of certificate based authentication was also it has that primary refresh token that tells um, uh, Entra as part of the authentication that it is a, a managed device it's a uh, it's hybrid joined and it's got all that compliance policy and everything in there um, so let's just have a, a quick run through of the policy access policy says um, allow managed devices if the uh, to Apache if the SAML attribute is true otherwise deny everybody access to Apache so my unmanaged devices are implied denied um, and then I could say I've got the same thing so CentOS is denied from the managed device so if I come back across to this one and I try and access uh, uh, CentOS I'll get the denied warning there because of that so those, those SAML attributes that are coming back because it's either managed or unmanaged is a side effect of hybrid joint um, I've got certificate based authentication um, I've got a certificate a private key public key on the on the device I've configured um, Windows I've configured edge to automatically send that certificate um, to uh, to enter during the logon process Entra validates it does OCSP CRL checks on those certificates um, the result of this is that I can either authenticate inside of client connector or using browser based um, authentication outside of uh, Zscaler Client Connector, consume all of those attributes in, uh, and then my policy can then dictate whether or not uh, I'm allowed access based on my device type. Uh, hope this is useful. Uh, mark at zscaler.com.